Hi there. Welcome to MCSI. My name is Erica. In this video, I will demonstrate how malware samples can be analyzed with Process Monitor, also known as Procmon. First, let's get familiar with Procmon's interface. Then we will analyze a malware sample with it. You can download the tool from Microsoft's official download page. Let's start Procmon. As soon as the application starts running, it begins to capture events occurring on the computer. Five categories of events are being captured at any time. It is indicated by the five buttons here. Registry activity. When registry keys and values are created, deleted, or modified. File system activity. When files and folders are created, accessed, and deleted. Network activity. Indicating outbound connections made by processes. Process and thread activity. Recording when they have been created and exited. And finally, profiling events, which indicates how the CPU was used by a process. The third button from the left is the Capture Events button. When it is highlighted, it means events are being captured. To stop the capture, simply deselect this option. You can also stop Event Capture from the File menu. If an item is highlighted, it means the relevant events are displayed here. To view only the registry activity, you can deselect the other items. You can view more information about an event either by double-clicking it or by clicking on the Event Properties button here. You can view the current process tree by clicking this button. This is helpful to identify if a target process has created any child processes. You can view events based on a specific filter. You can create custom filters. Let's choose to view all processes with the name explorer.exe. Add the filter and click Apply. Now, we can view only events as specified by the filter. We can also highlight specific events using this option. I will highlight all the file create operations Captured events can be saved for future reference. We can choose to record all events or only highlighted events and also the format we want the events to be saved in. Now let's analyze a malware sample's activity using Procmon. This is the chosen sample, payment.exe. I have already executed it and used Procmon to capture events. I have saved the events in a CSV file. Now, let's analyze them. I have created a filter to view only the events relevant to the malware sample. First, let's take a look at only the registry activity. A number of registry keys have been opened and queried, including those relevant to the .NET framework. It is possible that the executable was written using .NET. The sample also queries the status of antivirus software in use and the presence of MRT or malicious software removal tool developed by Microsoft. Now let's highlight operations where a registry value has been set. Scrolling towards the end, we can see that there is one entry. This path in the registry contains the names of executables that must be started at system boot time. The sample sets a file CRSI to execute when the system starts up. Next, let's take a look at the file system activity. 
we can see that a prefetch file has been created for the executable. It can also be examined to get more information about the sample. Take a look at another video on our channel where we walk you through investigating prefetch files. You can find the link to it in the description box below. We can see that a log file has been created by CLR, which is the common language runtime used by .NET executables. From the registry activity, we observe that a number of keys relevant to the .NET framework have been queried. Towards the end of the listing, we can see that an executable with the name CRSI has been created. This was the executable configured to start at system boot time. This could be a file dropped by the malware sample. We can see that a batch script has also been created as a temporary file. If a script has been created, has it been executed as well? For this, let's take a look at process and thread activity. Threads have been created as DLL have been imported for use. We can see that a child process with the same name has been created. Notice the difference in process ID. Following this, we can see that a process has been created for command prompt. Let's take a look at the process tree. We can see that payment.exe has created a child process with the same name, which has in turn created a child command prompt. Here, we can see the executed command. It appears that the batch script has been executed. Command prompt typically spawns the console host window as a child process. Timeout.exe is used to pause command processing for a specified number of seconds. It is used often in batch scripts. The processes are grayed out because they have exited. The sample does not exhibit any network activity. Based on our observations in Process Monitor, it appears that the sample drops two files, an executable configured to start at system boot time, and a batch script that was executed once. To know more about the sample, we can analyze it using other tools like PE Studio and also reverse engineer it. We can also attempt to retrieve the dropped files and analyze them. Do you have a good idea now about how a malware sample's behavior can be analyzed using Procmon? Here is a project idea for you. Pick a malware sample. On a virtual machine, ensure that Procmon is capturing events. Execute the malware sample. Allow it to execute for a while. Then in Procmon, stop the capture and analyze the recorded events using the various filters. Document your observations about the sample's behavior. I am sure you will have some interesting findings. If you liked this video, please hit like and share this video on social media. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to receive more videos like this one. Join our online community of students learning useful cybersecurity skills if you haven't already. To register for a free account right away, go to our website. Happy learning and see you soon!